Chapter 7, Home Again Poppy and her father did not talk on the long way home. Only occasionally did she say, Watch the puddle, Papa, or Won't be long now. That was all. Lungwort, walking with his head down, eyes glued to his feet, kept uttering sighs. Now and then he reached up to touch his hat, just to be sure it was there. Once after stealing a look at Poppy, a look that she caught, he let out something like a moan. Poppy was fearful of asking her father the questions she kept asking herself. If Mr. Okax refused permission for the move, and he had, and if there was not enough food, and her father said that was true, what was the family to do? Would some of them have to forage in distant places, in the open? That meant they'd be at the mercy of Mr. Okax, a complete calamity. Poppy peeked again at Ragweed's earring. She kept asking herself why she had ever gone to the hill with Ragweed without asking permission. She knew better. Look at all the trouble she'd caused. Just then she hated herself for having loved Ragweed. But just to think that thought made her heart ache. Rain was still falling when they reached Gray House. Both mice were soaked and exhausted. The once white flag trailed in the mud. A large number of mice were milling about on the porch waiting for the expected good news. Sure enough, when Poppy and Lungwort appeared, a cheer went up. That The sound brought Lungwort to a dead halt. The old mouse stared blankly at the rows of eager faces. A second cheer began but faded as the onlookers sensed something was wrong. Silent and grim-faced, eyes averted, Lungwort painfully climbed the gray house steps. Alarmed into silence, the mice backed away to let him pass. Poppy saw her mother break through the crowd. Lungwort, she cried. Oh, my dear, what happened? Lungwort lifted sad eyes. Without a word, he continued on into the house, retreating into his boot study and drawing the curtain behind him. For a moment, Sweet Cicely stared after her husband. Then she dashed into the boot after him. Only then did the others notice Poppy. She had been standing alone, quite ignored. Now they surrounded her and pelted her with questions. What's happened? Is something the matter? What's with Lungwort? What did Mr. Okak say? Poppy, not sure how to reply, remained silent. Finally, she held up a paw her father's gesture. The mice responded as they always did. They grew quiet. Swallowing hard, Poppy said, Mr. Okax refused permission for anyone to move. Like air escaping from a balloon, there was a collective gasp from the crowd, but a torrent of questions followed. What did Mr. Okax say? Didn't Lungwort explain? What are we supposed to do now? Did the owl give any reasons? Poppy lifted a paw again. Once the crowd had stilled, she confessed softly. Mr. Okax said it was because Ragweed and I didn't ask permission to go to Bannock Hill. She hoped for a chorus, or at least one mouse, who would say, that's not fair, or that's absurd. No such word was spoken. Alarmed, Poppy looked around. Some eyes avoided hers. Others showed sorrow. Quite a few darted angry glares at her. You'll have to excuse me now, she murmured, quite shaken. I need to get myself dry. A narrow passage was made for her to pass. As she entered the house, she felt a nudge from behind. Alarmed, she jumped. It was Basil. This way, he whispered. He led her to an isolated room. Dry yourself, he said. I'll get you something hot. Placing Ragweed's earring to one side, Poppy began licking her fur dry. By the time she was done, Basil returned with an acorn of steaming mashed rye. Despite her upset, Poppy ate ravenously, grateful for the warmth that seeped through her body. Basil listened intently as Poppy told of the meeting with Mr. Okax. And look what I found, 
She held up Ragweed's earring. Basil took it carefully. Where was it? Sticking out of one of Mr. Okax's pellets. Makes me sick, he muttered. After a while, he asked, Poppy, what's going to happen next? Poppy sighed. I thought it would have been impossible to feel worse than I did when Ragweed died. I was wrong. This is worse. So many will suffer. And guess who's being blamed? Me! Wearily, Poppy made her way to the attic. She wanted to be alone. Amid Farmer Lamout's clutter, she'd come across a tin can a while ago shaped like a house. Log cabin syrup, the label read. After cleaning the inside to a shiny newness and lining it with her favorite old magazine bits, Poppy considered it her own room. Now she patted down a wad of, fil wad of filmy lace, her pillow, and crept beneath a blanket, a crocheted doily. Curled up into a tight ball, she tucked in her paws and wrapped her tail about her, tucking its tip right below her nose. Never had she felt so worn out. Even so, she could not sleep. She kept hearing Mr. Okak say that he was refusing permission for family members to move because they, she and Ragweed, had not asked him if they could go to Bannock Hill. Then, too, there was his hint that he would change his mind if she sacrificed herself. She was glad she had not mentioned that to the family, rather suspecting some of them would have urged her to do it. The mere hint of such a thing gave Poppy the horrors. She drew herself into a tighter ball. Harder to deal with was her own inner voice. It kept insisting that if what she and Ragweed had done was the reason for keeping others from moving and being safe, maybe she should sacrifice herself. A tear trickled down her face, rolled to the end of a whisker, and dropped into her pillow. Oh, she thought, if only Ragweed were here, he would have something to say. But what? she asked, trying to cheer herself up. Most likely a question, a backward one, just like the time he asked Lungwort how Mr. Okax could confuse huge porcupines with small deer mice. Even as she thought about Ragweed's asking, Poppy realized that her father never did give an answer. She wondered why. Poppy forced herself back to her problem. Mr. Okak said he was refusing permission because of something she and Ragweed had done. How would Ragweed have turned that around? Poppy could almost hear it. Ragweed would have said, what did refusing permission allow Mr. Okax to do? Just asking herself the question because it lifted some of the burden from her gave Poppy a touch of encouragement. Well then, what did refusing permission allow Mr. Okax to do? Poppy tried to remember exactly what occurred when her father finally came to his point and requested permission for the move. Slowly but clearly, it came back. When Lungwort asked the question, Mr. Okax became flustered. He seemed unsure about something, something connected with Newhouse. That is, he didn't ask Longwort about the move. He asked if he had been to Newhouse. In fact, he actually asked the question twice. Or was it three times? The point was, the moment Longwort had said he had not been to Newhouse, that was when Mr. Okak said no. But it was not, Poppy recalled, no, you can't move. Rather, it was, no, you cannot move to Newhouse. Well then, what did refusing permission allow Mr. Okax to do? It allowed him to keep the mice away from Newhouse. Poppy sat up. Was it possible that there was something there at Newhouse that Mr. Okax wanted to keep hidden from them? Was that the real reason for his refusal? The idea so excited Poppy that she felt like rushing downstairs to tell Lungwort. She started to get up only to stop. If she had hit upon the real reason for Mr. Okax's refusal, there was but one way she could prove it. She would have to go to Newhouse and see what was there. And she could hardly ask Mr. Okax permission to do that. I don't care, Poppy said aloud, making a fist of a paw. I'll do it, I will. With a sigh of exhaustion, 
Poppy finally fell asleep, but it was not a restful sleep. She kept dreaming she was lost. Worse, no matter where she turned for help, she saw only eyes, Mr. Okax's eyes. They were always just above and behind her.